Hello everybody, so we're back here again today to do some more geography learning and today we're going to carry on our learning about India. Now we have all seen this picture that you can see on the screen before. Can you remember what the name was of this imaginary red line that's going across my picture? It's the equator and when we've looked at this before we talked about how the equator is an imaginary line which goes between or across the earth and it splits the earth up into two equal parts. We've got the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere as well. So I would like you to pause the video. Now it might be a little bit hard to see the place names on the map but we know roughly where each continent is. So now that we know which continent India is in can you have a look on the map and see if you can roughly find where India is? See if you can pause the video to find it. So we know that India is in Asia and this continent here is Asia. And I can see that India is just here. It's quite small in the writing, but India is here. So now that we know that India is here and our imaginary line, which is the equator, is here, what do you think the climate would be like in India? What weather do you think they experience? Do you think they would have the same weather that we experience here in the UK? Do you think they would have the same weather that they would experience in a place like Antarctica? So if you can pause the video and explain to somebody, what do you think the climate might be like in India and why? So we know that India is closer to the equator compared to where we are. So the weather in India is much warmer more regularly throughout the year compared to our weather which we experience in the UK and this is because countries that are closer to the equator have the sun overhead for longer periods of time throughout the day and therefore it's warmer whereas in the UK we're further away and we experience different seasons throughout the year. So we're going to be thinking about where India is, so we know it's north of the equator, and how that can affect its climate. And then we're going to compare it to our climate that we have in the UK. So let's have a look at our map of India. We can see that we've got our map of India, which shows the different place names, which we've also looked at this week. Do you think the climate would be the same in all of India? Bearing in mind that we know India is a very big country, especially compared to the UK. So do we think the climate, the weather, is going to be the same across the whole country? So do you think they would experience the same weather as they would in the Himalayas and the same weather that they would experience towards the bottom of the country? So I want you to see if you can explain to somebody, do you think the climate is the same in all of India? OK, so we're going to look at some different areas in India today and have a look at what their climate is like. So. The first part of India that we're going to look at is the Himalayas, which we know is at the north of the country. And we know that the Himalayas are a mountain range in Asia because the Himalayas aren't just in India. We know that we've got China here as well. And the tall mountains form a barrier from the cold and strong winds. So there are very cold and strong winds which come from North Asia and this keeps South Asia much warmer compared to other reasons. So the Himalayas forms that barrier so that the cold winds can't get to the rest of the country. So we're going to be thinking about how the climate differs in different parts of India. So we know that the Himalayas, it doesn't mean that they're cold all of the time because they do experience different seasons throughout the year, but in the winter it does get very, very cold. So which part of India do you think might be the warmest and why do you think this? Okay, so we're going to move on to have a look at a table which shows us the average temperature in some of the different places in India in the summer and again in the winter. So these are average temperatures. It doesn't mean it's always this temperature. It's the average temperature. Let's start by looking at the Himalayas. So like I said on our previous slide, the Himalayas, just because they have the cold wind, which come from China and Nepal, it doesn't mean that they're always cold. So in the summer, it's a comfortable temperature of 19 degrees. That's like a nice summer's day that we might have here. 
warm enough to wear a t-shirt and maybe some shorts but in the winter it can get very very cold in the Himalayas and it can be around minus eight degrees so that's when you would have snow and things would start to freeze as well because it's gone below zero degrees so it can get very cold in the Himalayas in the winter. Moving on to look at the weather in Kolkata so in the summer it's a little bit warmer compared to the Himalayas it's around 24.8 degrees and that would be like a nice hot summer's day that we would have here in the UK and then in the winter the temperature does go down it's colder but not really cold so it's still around 18 degrees and that to us is also quite warm here in the UK at 18 degrees so in the UK we would still be warm enough to possibly wear shorts and a t-shirt at 18 degrees whereas this is their temperature in the winter in Jaipur the temperature is a little bit warmer not much around 25.1 degrees in the summer but then in the winter it drops more compared to Kolkata and it drops down to 10 degrees which is around the weather temperature that we experience in October November time in our country and then Shanghai is 30 degrees in the summer so that is like a really hot summer's day especially if you've been abroad to a hot sunny country in the summer holidays that's around that temperature that you've probably experienced and then it stays relatively warm as well in the winter so we know that in the Himalayas the temperature can get much much colder because of those cold winds and that's why it starts to freeze let's move on to have a look at a graph so this might look a little bit confusing when you first start to look at it but I'm going to explain to you what it is showing so it's showing us the average temperature and the average rainfall in Delhi in India so we're going to be thinking about which is the hottest month and we're going to be thinking of the temperature in terms of degrees Celsius so we're going to be looking at this column here which we can see is red so we're going to be looking at the red line that is going across our graph so along the bottom our months are represented in numbers and we know that in one year there are 12 months so January is the first month so it'd be number one February number two March April May June July August September October November and the last month which is number 12 is December so we're going to be thinking about which is the hottest month and we're only concentrating at the moment on this red line which we can see going along our graph so the lower it is on the graph is the colder the temperature and the higher on the graph is the highest temperature can you work out which month has the warmest temperature in Indi in Delhi in India so to work it out I'm going to find the highest point on my graph which I can see is here which is showing 35 degrees Celsius and then I'm going to follow it down to see which month it falls in line with and it falls in line with month number six which is June so if you said that June is the hottest month in Delhi well done which is the coldest month or coldest months have a look at the graph again and pause the video which month or months are the coldest in Delhi so I'm going to go in line with this one here and this one here so I can see they're both in line with 15 degrees Celsius so we've got month number one which we know is January and month number 12 which we know is December so in December through to January is the coldest months in Delhi in India at around 15 degrees Celsius this time it's asking us which month has the most rainfall so if we know the red line is showing us our rainfall the blue line which we're going to look at in terms of millimeters is the average amount of rainfall so we're going to be looking at the bar chart and we've had a look at bar charts in class before haven't we so I'd like you to find which month has the most rainfall remember to use the chart along the side the axis along the side which is showing us how much rainfall so I can see our tallest bar is this one here at 28 millimeters of rainfall that's 28 centimeters of rainfall so if you imagine a ruler one of the long rulers that we use at school it's just a little bit shorter than that and that 
falls in August in Delhi. So August has the most rainfall. So which month has the least rainfall? See if you can pause the video and find which month has the least rainfall. So I can see there are two months which I am quite torn between. So we've got month number four, which is April, and month number 11, which is November. And I would say that it will be in line with around 10 millimetres of rain. So that's not very much rain at all. So the months which have the least rainfall are April and November. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and I'd like you on a piece of paper, just a quick write, it doesn't have to be in your neatest writing for now. I'd like you to write down as many different ways or you can think of it in your head. What is the climate like in India? And what is the climate like in the UK? Okay, so you may have written things down like if we start with India, India is closer to the equator, so they have longer hours of daylight. Whereas in the UK, we're further away from the equator and that's why we have all of the different seasons. So in the winter, it gets dark much later. It gets dark so much earlier and then it also doesn't brighten up until much later in the morning. Whereas India, they have longer hours of daylight. Different parts of India experience different types of weather. The Himalayas get very cold during the winter months but their winters don't get very cold in the rest of India. Whereas in the UK, we have a much more temperate climate. So this is where we experience lots of different seasons and different types of weather. So your activity today is you're going to be doing some cross-curricular writing. You're going to have access to this document here. So you're going to have three different paragraphs, but they are missing some key words. And all of the key words which you will need are in the box at the bottom. And we would like you to rewrite the paragraph so rather than filling in the boxes we would like you to rewrite it if possible please and we would like you to choose which word fits best into the box we've got india is in and bradley stoke is in so i think this could be talking about which continents these two places are in because we've talked a lot about how bradley stoke is the place we're looking at in the uk Let's see if we can find the words we're looking for. I can see Asia and I can also see Europe. So perhaps it could be India is in Asia and Bradley Stoke is in Europe. And this is one part of how it can affect the climate because they're in different continents of the world. This means that we have different climates because we are in different parts of the world. Just giving away the next one to you. So your activity is you're going to fill in the rest of the gaps and rewrite these three paragraphs for us today. We'd love to see some of your writing, so please don't forget that you can email it to us as well. I hope you enjoy the activity. Take care. Bye.